Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a book review on The Paradox Hotel by Rob Hart. In The Paradox Hotel by Rob Hart, January Cole runs security at the Paradox Hotel, a hotel that caters to the wealthy and elite who like to time travel to past historical events. Tensions run high on the eve of a summit at the hotel, where government officials and other highly important people are arriving to make bids to control the hotel for their own purposes. Incident after incident begins to pile up as January realizes the time stream is acting up. She's the only one who can see a dead body in one of the hotel rooms, and some dinosaurs have purposely been released to roam the halls. Something sinister is happening at the Paradox, and January is determined to figure out the hotel's secrets before it's too late. You guys, this book wasn't entirely what I was expecting. In some ways, I was a tad bit disappointed with it, but for the most part, I did like it. It was fine. It was still a good a good time. Um, it, it did. It just didn't really go in the the direction, I guess, that I was maybe anticipating and expecting it to go. Um, but that's kind of just a me problem, you know, because there were definitely plenty of reviews on Goodreads, the people who did really appreciate this book and got a lot out of it. Um, so yeah, this book was a tad bit disappointing for me, but 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 still, I did like it. Um, anybody who has been floating around on my channel for a while, um, you know that I tend to gravitate towards historical fiction. Historical fiction is the big genre that I really love and appreciate. Um, and science fiction, because this is definitely a science fiction book, um, science fiction is kind of lower on my, my list of genres that I read. Um, it's kind of more like in the middle. So whenever I do get around to science fiction, it can be very hit or miss for me, uh, just kind of depending on the type of science fiction that it is. Um, because the more overly complex it is, the more I'm not going to like it. So before I do kind of start heading deeper into this review, something that I do want to applaud author Rob Hart for, I do want to applaud him for the fact that this was a book that was very easy for someone like me to get into, someone who doesn't typically read a lot of science fiction. Um, he made a lot of the com complexities going on in this book, anything dealing with science or technology or, or whatever, he made all of that stuff, I think, very accessible for the average reader, if that makes sense. Makes sense. But also something still very enjoyable for the people who read a lot of science fiction to, to begin with, that it's not like dumbed down at all. I don't think this book is dumbed down at all, but it, it did. It felt very accessible to me that I was able to understand, for the most part, everything that was going on. And, um, because especially books that deal with time travel, it, it can be, it can be a, a tricky thing to handle, um, because you got to deal with paradoxes and time streams and, you know, just various different nuances when it comes to time travel, you know, it, it can be a very complex, wild, bizarre sort of thing. And I think Rob Hart had a really strong control and handle of this universe that he set up and built and the nature of how time travel works in this world. You know, he seemed to have a really good understanding of that because sometimes you can read a book like this or yeah, even if you're watching a movie or a television show that deals with, with, um, with time travel in some sort of way, sometimes you can tell that the writers, it's like they don't even understand their own time travel and that can kind of be a bit of a problem. Like, and because then that's when you start getting, um, like plot holes, you know, you start getting plot holes. So I don't think this book, to me, I don't think it suffered from like plot holes. I think every little thing in regards to the science and the technology and the time travel, I think eventually by the end of this book, anything that maybe felt like it wasn't concluded or if it felt like there was some sort of plot hole or whatever, it's like, I feel like none of that existed by the end of this book. Like I felt satisfied concluding this book and I felt comfortable with the fact that I felt like I understood it. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, for, for me, that was kind of a big deal that I understood this book, even if there were elements about it that I didn't particularly like, I, I still understood it, at least, and I definitely really applaud and praise Rob Hart, um, 
how masterfully he did craft this novel and that I felt like he had a really good grip on it that me the reader I, I could get into this comfortably that I knew I had a reliable author that this was in a reliable hand you know and the character of January Cole she works at the Paradox Hotel which is a hotel that um, caters to like the wealthy and elite the privileged and, and like the far future um, and it this hotel basically has like areas that you can go to and you can time travel to the past to past historical events and whatnot and witness history and yeah that is really only an option for the wealthy and privileged in this in this in the story and whatnot so yeah january cole she works security at this hotel and what i like to do about this book january she's not a scientist you know she's not a scientist she's kind of just an average person to some extent she understands some of the nuances involved but she's not one of the the researchers or developers or anything like that you know she strictly kind of just does security but she knows what she needs to know so the good thing about that is that january it's like you could almost kind of relate to her in a sense it's like the reader the reader in january are kind of the same almost you know uh, as january is experiencing things and she's struggling with things and as she has questions about things it's like you are in that exact same position as the reader which i liked um you and your your protagonist are on the same page you know your protagonist is not steps ahead of you nor are you steps ahead of your protagonist which can sometimes be a bit of a problem so i, I liked that whole thing that you the reader in january you are experiencing everything kind of in real time as this novel is occurring now as for my big personal issue with this book you guys and this is probably just a me thing this may not be a big deal you know um, like I said, I am a lover of all things historical fiction. So that was a big part of why I kind of picked up this book when I found out that the, the, the narrative took place at this hotel that caters to, to people who want to time travel to the past. I was like, oh, wow, that sounds so awesome. That sounds so cool. There's just so much potential for a book like this, you know? So I kind of went into this book thinking uh, that... I'm, I'm trying to explain. I'm trying to think how best to kind of explain kind of my inner processing of what I was kind of expecting. I was kind of thinking this book, this might sound a little weird at first, but kind of go with me. I was kind of initially thinking that this book would be sort of something like The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. Now, yes, that, that might sound like a weird comparison, but l let me let me continue. Because, uh, you know, in like The Da Vinci Code, for instance, you're following Robert Langdon, uh, who he is he is called to like a crime scene and he he's able to like decipher like riddles and symbols and stuff and so the whole nature of something like the da vinci code it's following robert langdon as he is essentially globe trotting around the world or around a city or a country or something he's he's kind of globe trotting and it's bas basically like a treasure hunt type of book and he's solving riddles and finding clues and going from location to location and yet either going to a location that's a dead end and he has to start over from the last clue or he he gets he makes headway with a clue or something you know so i was kind of expecting this book to almost have a sort of similar vibe to something like the da vinci code and what i mean by that i was expecting the story to take place through the time travel a lot more like because there is like a, a mystery element involved in this story and even like a murder and whatnot um, there's a lot of mystery and, and thriller aspects to this narrative, so I was kind of expecting January, since she did work security, I was expecting her, okay, here is this big issue and problem that I have to deal with, because there's something crazy going on at the hotel, there's some sort of conspiracy going on, and it, it probably has to do with the government, you know, um, I was expecting that it would involve her having to, like, globe trot if you will globe trot through historical events that she would have to time travel like weave in and out of time travel to find to find and hunt down the conspiracy and who is behind it does that make sense so that was my frustration with this novel that because you get this plot summary that it has a lot to do with time travel and there's not really anything that involves time travel in this book whatsoever. Um, 
you hear about past incidents involving time travel because you do get the idea early on in this novel that time travel is kind of this new thing and it's not perfect. It's still something that is growing and being developed and there have been incidents with time travel where people have died by accident. Um, so you hear about past incidents and then there is one brief flashback chapter that's kind of really integral to like um, January's relationship with another character in this book. There is a chapter where um, her and this character are like in Nazi Germany and they're doing something specifically there in Nazi Germany. Um, but that's it for the time travel, you guys. There is absolutely no time travel really in this book. This book is called The Paradox Hotel. You're in the hotel. The entire plot is in this hotel. And the fact that there's this government summit that is at the hotel and all these big powerful players within various different governments around the world, all these people have some sort of investment and interest in buying the hotel. Some for um, maybe good reasons, but for the most part a lot of people just have really nefarious, insidious reasons. Because, yeah, if time travel falls into the wrong hands, especially the government, what does that mean? And you definitely get the idea early on in this novel, too, that a big part of this hotel is that people need, they, they can time travel, they can go back to whatever historical event they want to, but they can't change anything. You know, they can't change anything, they can't touch anything, because if they do anything that could possibly change the timeline, God knows what that's going to do to the future, you know? So... Yeah, for me, you guys, that was my one big negative. I was really expecting January to be hopping around time traveling. You know, like, oh, she'll go to Renaissance Italy over here. Hey, she might go hang out with King Henry VIII over here. Oh my gosh, she might get on the Titanic over here. You know, just, just, anyway, I just was expecting her, the big mystery thriller aspect of this novel that she's investigating, I just was expecting that it would involve a lot more time travel, that she would have to investigate by time traveling for whatever reason like the culprit you know was like hopping around you know and she had to like follow him around you know in order to stop whatever he was doing you know think of something like timeless i guess that's kind of something i'm trying to think about too you know think about timeless the tv show timeless it was very short-lived it only had like two seasons you guys but if you loved the tv show timeless because that was about a group of people who were after this secret agency that was going around changing things purposely in time for some nefarious reason. And so our group of protagonists had to stop this big agency from changing history, you know, because history used to stay as history and not be changed. Um, so this, I was kind of expecting this book to be like the TV show Timeless, I guess is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> if that makes any sort of sense. So overall, I, I did like the book. It was fine for what it was. I did appreciate it in my own way. It's just not what I was personally wanting nor expecting, and that's just a me problem. Um, other things that I did like about the book, I did really like the amount of character development for the character of January. I was very pleasantly surprised with the amount of character development with her, because I was just kind of expecting this to be a very straightforward book that was focused on plot more so than character. But I think it really balances that out really well with plot and character, that you're getting a nice balance of both. It's not like one-sided or anything. Because a lot of times with science fiction, I feel like it's a lot more one-sided towards plot and whatever the story is, you know. So I really appreciated the amount of character growth and development with January because at the start of this novel, January can be quite abrasive, I'll say, and not very, very likable at all. I mean, she has her reasons why she is the way that she is and there's some struggles that she's going through. Um, but I did, I really appreciate where she is at the beginning of this novel versus where she is by the end while still being who she is deep down, you know. And I think more than anything, this book, weirdly enough, has a lot to do with death and loss because January without spoiling anything January has lost somebody at the start of this book you know immediately she has lost someone that she deeply cared about and loved and that loss is still lingering with her and she's having a hard time letting go of that and processing it and so the the course of events with this story are really kind of forcing her to cope with that loss and to finally grieve properly because it's like she never really grieved properly so uh, that was another really pleasant aspect of this book um kind of the themes of it, it it's really dealing a lot with um 
with with loss and tragedy and grief and whatnot and yeah you have this backdrop of the the hotel obviously and all the government conspiracy stuff going on and all these crazy characters you know out to get the hotel you know so there's there's a lot of interesting things going on in this book um, but yeah, if, if you're someone who really likes and appreciates uh, science fiction, I think you might possibly get a lot more out of it than I did. I don't know. Um, but yeah, even for someone very casual with science, science fiction like myself, I definitely would recommend this and give it a shot if it sounds like your sort of thing. I mean, if you're someone who likes like Doctor Who, you know, you'll probably really get into this. Um, and yeah, A Sound of Thunder. You guys, I was mentioning earlier that this book made me think a lot about the TV show Timeless, but there were definitely a lot of aspects of this book. The um, the short story, uh, Sound of Thunder by Ray Bradbury, which is just a science fiction classic. I think a lot of people tend to read that in high school. If you have never read A Sound of Thunder, get on top of that. You are not going to be disappointed. Uh, there's definitely a lot of influences of A Sound of Thunder within this book, which I greatly appreciate because I love A Sound of Thunder, you guys. <laughs> So you guys, that is it for my thoughts and feelings on The Paradox Hotel by Rob Hart. In the comments below, have you guys read this book? Do you plan on reading it? Just let me know your thoughts down below. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.